In the northwest of Ireland, County Leitrim, there's a freshwater lake about a mile long called Loch Glenad, and it's a fine lake. A smooth sheet of blue, a mirror to the heavens, wrapped up in the warmth of the long green mountains. Truly a beautiful place to visit and a horrible place to die. And our story today begins at that lake. It's a tale of a husband and a wife, each forced to decide just how far they would go for the sake of their love. Would they, for instance, kill a person? How about kill an otter? Well, one of each of them will do just that. Big ol' thanks to Factor for helping to keep us well-fed fast. In the 18th century, young Grace Connolly lived by the shores of Loch Glenad in Ireland, along with her husband, Ter McLaughlin. Now, Ter can be short for either Terence or Terrible Tragedy. And in the case of today's tale, it was sadly both. One day, Grace went out to wash their laundry in the lake, but hours passed without her return. Hmm, that's strange. I mean, it wasn't that much laundry. So, a concerned Ter rode out after her on horseback. And what awaited him when he arrived at the water's edge? Oh, by God, the things he saw. He saw the once tranquil lake despoiled by blood and violence. He saw his wife lying dead on the shore. And he saw an otter squat atop Grace, fangs harvesting blood from her body. Oh, and this otter was monstrous, as big as a dog and white as the pale moon, except for a black cross splashed across the back of its fur. A truly horrendous sight. Although it's not like a normal otter drinking his wife's blood would have been any better, but you get where I'm going, right? And just a moment after his eyes locked on this horror, Tur's horse caught a glimpse of it too, reared up, throwing him off, and bolted. Thanks a bunch, pal. Jeez. Now, this was surely the most terrifying moment of Tur's life. But he didn't panic. He didn't scream. He didn't cry. Because while he didn't know exactly what he'd just seen, he did know what to do about it. This otter had killed his wife. This otter must die. Tur grabbed his rifle, aimed directly at the creature, and fired. His aim was true, and it left a fatal wound. The ghastly, blood-sucking beast keeled over and keened its death cry into the water. Ha <laughs> ha! So far, so avenged. But there was something odd about the otter's cry, more of a long, sharp squeal, really, that broke the calm of the lake like a rock. Aftershocks shuddered along the surface, and something stirred from deep within the cold waters below. Suddenly, a second otter came storming out of the water, just as big as the last. Same white fur, same black cross. In fact, the only real difference was, this one was mad. Okay, um, you know, maybe his horse had the right idea from the jump, he thought. And Tur turned tail and ran all the way home. Once safe back in his village, he told all of his neighbors what had happened. They listened intently to his story until he was finished, and then responded with the incredibly helpful, Oh, you're screwed. For the thing Tur had seen, the thing he'd killed, was no otter. It was the Dovar Ku, otherwise called the Master Otter, a.k.a. Father of All Otters, a.k.a. King of All the Lakes. Legend said he commanded an army of a hundred common otters, that he never sleeps, that his skin was magic, and that when he ran at top speed, his nose could split rocks. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Good for the Master Otter and all, but Tur had just shot the damn thing. Like, so why did his neighbors still think he was screwed? Well, they explained, because of the second otter, the one who saw Tur holding the gun over the master otter's corpse. That was another master otter. Oh, yeah, there were more than one. This one was surely the first master otter's wife. It was then Tur understood. He knew full well what it was like to lose one's love, to be all consumed by the desire for vengeance. And he knew exactly what was coming, for it was exactly what he had done. Run, cried the neighbors. You must run for your very life. Leave this place and never look back. Oh, and uh, very sorry about Grace, by the way. It's terrible. So yeah, Tur's horse did have the right idea. Though as it so happened, that very horse had also just wandered back to Tur, willing and ready to show him the virtues of running away. Upon this horse, Tur fled, accompanied by his brother Gilmartin. Because let's be real, you can always count on family to help you run away from an otter, right? But now, just where to? Mm, well. They didn't really know. All the way to the Irish Sea, perhaps. The Atlantic Ocean? How far would they have to go to outrun Ter's death at the webbed paws of a widowed mistress otter sworn on revenge? I mean, even hell hath no fury as furry as this, right? Meanwhile, through muck, mud, and mire, the wronged Dovarku pursued the brothers McLaughlin, the otter's restless barking like a siren deafening the night. But after about 20 miles of hearing his impending doom behind him, 
Tur decided he was done running. Because honestly, where would it end? No, he would stop and fight. Maybe that's just the kind of person he was. Maybe he thought that's what Greece would have wanted. Or maybe he finally came to the realization, wait, I can't just flee the country because I'm scared of an otter. That's very silly. So, at a place called Castle Garden Hill, the brothers dismounted and prepared to make their final stand. They sharpened their knives and cleaned their guns. Even Tur's cowardly horse, who had honestly been running his whole life, stood his ground to fight. Well, sort of. See, Tur ordered him to stand as a diversion in the road to delay the Dovarku's rampage, even if it meant his own death. Not exactly what the horse had in mind, but, you know, sure, whatever, man. So with the brave diversionary equine out in the open, the men hid, locked and loaded. The night deathly still, but for the shrieks of the widowed Master Otter, getting louder and louder by the second, until suddenly its source was upon them. That horrible face Tur had seen by the lake, white fur, whiskers sharp as razors, that little black teddy bear nose. The Mistress Otter was here. Her gleaming eyes clapped on the man who had killed her husband. Only thing in the way was a big old bag of horse meat, but that was no trouble. She broke into a sprint, quick like lightning, and leapt, shooting through the air like a missile toward Tur's brave four-hoofed companion, nose out, about to drill a hole through the horse's belly. But before you could say glue factory, Tur McLaughlin pounced from behind the shrubs and drove the point of his dagger into the Mistress Otter's heart, and she hit the ground dead. Oh, here's the nightmare over. Now, I think it's safe to say that most of us have never killed a master otter, let alone two. So it's really no surprise that this act became legend. In fact, a depiction of the battle itself is etched into Tur and Grace's gravestones. Actually, Tur's horse was immortalized as well, though just for the time it abandoned him at the lake. Ever since, supposedly, that village he ran to has been called Gorinard, meaning bad horse. You know, I bet that's the version of the myth they tell to horses, right? Like, face your fears or have your cowardice etched into your culture's national memory. <laughs> but for us human people, the legend of the Dovarku has a much different, simpler moral. Do be afraid. Don't tarry by the lake. Don't stay out after dark. Hurry home. Or the Dovarku might just grab you and drag you down to its watery hell. Besides, the sooner you do get home, the sooner you can have a warm, tasty meal that was delivered right to your door thanks to Factor. No otter murder required. And I can say that legally. Now, if you've heard me talk about HelloFresh in the past, you know by now how much I love to cook. But the dark truth is that life often gets in the way of me finding time to make a meal from scratch. So then I start turning to alternatives, right? But frozen meals have too many preservatives and never taste good. And my bank account seems to strongly disagree with consistent takeout orders. Well, my solution for this quandary of the ages honestly has been Factor. They're an amazing ready-to-eat meal delivery service that takes the guesswork out of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I have truly been enjoying them for months now. I had one for dinner last night, and I'm having one for lunch today. They are fantastic. Every meal is ready in around two minutes with no prep or no mess. Just good dang food right when you need it. Also, Factor gives you a ton of meal options to choose from so you can achieve any nutrition goals you're going for. Everything from keto, protein plus, veggie, vegan options, calorie smart, which I believe are meals around 550 calories or less, and just a ton more. All of which you can choose from from their tastacular rotating weekly menu that I do every Sunday. Day. And actually, I just realized because I didn't think about this before, you can actually mix and match between all of those in your deliveries to ensure that everyone in your household gets the exact kind of food that they love fast. Case in point, today was feeling a bit veggie for lunch, so I devoured their biryani rice with tandoori cauliflower and curry yogurt, which I'm sure, as you can tell from the look on my face right there, not only made my day just infinitely better, but actually the time I saved not preparing that meal let me play an extra run of Vampire Survivors on my lunch break, Pepino for the win, baby! <laughs> so this spring, if you want to eat better while also just being better with your time, you should head over to Factor75.com and use the code extra credits 50 That way you'll get 50% off your first Factor box. And when you do, not only will you be getting fast, tasty meals that fit your lifestyle, but you'll also be helping to directly support the content you love. Seriously, thank you. Ooh, but speaking of things that you love, I know I've said this before, but you have got to check out their smoothies. Holy heck, they are good. Again, that is 50% off your first box at Factor75.com com and using the code extra credits 50 thank you in advance we'll see you next time say did you ever hear the one about skylar holmes kuya koi joseph lame dominic valenciana casey mustia arcolite games angela valenciana and ahmed ziad turk being fantastic legendary patrons because i sure did